So first of all, thank you very much to Professor Bergen for inviting me here. I'm not as established as, as the previous speakers. I'm a PhD student. So right, I, I, hope, uh, I hope you'll enjoy my talk. Uh, this is a joint work with my colleague Andrea Veni and my advisor Shayan Mukherjee uh, at Duke University. And as Professor Bergen was saying, this um, we're going to talk about non diophantine arithmetics as a tool for formalizing information about nature and technology. So uh, a summary of the talk is the following. So we first introduce what a non-diophantine arithmetic is, and then we present three classes of non-diophantine arithmetics. Uh, and in particular, we will discuss their importance for formalizing information about nature and technology. And we also study some of their more interesting properties. These are more um, interesting on the math side, and, and I hope you, you'll find them interesting as well. Um, so before starting, let me let me give an historical excursus of how the idea of uh, non-diophantine arithmetics came about. So although the, 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 the conventional arithmetic called uh, diophantine arithmetics from Diophantus, the Greek mathematician who first approached this branch of mathematics, is almost as old as mathematics itself, it sometimes fails to convey um, and to correctly describe natural phenomena. So for example, von Helmholtz <clears throat> uh, argued that adding one raindrop to another one leaves us with, with one raindrop. And also Maurice Klein in his 1980 paper showed that uh, <clears throat> the Afantine arithmetic fails to correctly describe the result of combining gases on liquids by volume. For example, uh, one quarter of alcohol and one quarter of water only yield about 1.8 quarters of vodka. So to overcome this issue, uh, scholars started developing inconsistent arithmetics uh, that are arithmetics for which one or more piano axioms were at the same time true and false. And the most striking one was uh, ultra intuitionism, which was developed by uh, Yesenin Volpin, uh, that asserted that only a finite quantity of natural number exists. Other uh, approaches were more moderate, but all of them uh, had the same, like, let's call it flaw, that is the inconsistency. Uh, was rooted in the fact that they all were grounded in the ordinary Diophantine arithmetic. So the first consistent alternative uh, to Diophantine arithmetics was proposed by Professor Berging himself in 1977. And of course, the name non-Diophantine seemed perfectly suited uh, in the way non-Euclidean geometries are a per is a perfect name for uh, geometries that do not follow uh, Euclidean axioms. So non-diophantine arithmetics for natural and whole numbers have been primarily studied by Professor Bergen, and those for real and complex number by Professor Zakor, who's going to speak in this, in this uh, conference as well. And a complete account on non-diophantine arithmetics can be found in their recent book in 2020, which I really encourage you to, to buy and, and look at. So let's start with uh, what abstract arithmetics are. An abstract arithmetic is a four-tuple and it's, uh, it, it looks like this. And uh, set A is the carrier of the abstract arithmetic, that is the set of the elements of, of the set. Then we have a partial order uh, defined on, on, on A. And plus A and times A are two binary operations defined on the elements of A. Um, they, we call them um, addition and multiplication, but they can be whichever binary operation uh, the, the scholar needs. And of course, the conventional Diophantine arithmetic on the reals uh, is an abstract pre-arithmetic. So the one we usually use. <clears throat> we say, sorry, that an abstract pre-arithmetic pre is weakly projective with respect to another one. If there exist two functions, which we call G and H, the first one going from A to B and the, and the second one from B to A, such that for every two elements of A, we have that these holds and these holds. So basically we are, doing, uh, we, we are summing to two elements of B now, G of A1 and G of A2, and then we are computing H on the result of the sum and likewise for the product. Uh, function G is called the projector and function H the co-projector of the pair A and B. Uh, and this is a, a kind of a less, less important uh, definition, but it's gonna be relevant for later. That is the weak projection of the sum of two numbers uh, in, in of two elements of B onto A is defined as H of B1 plus B, B2, right? So here we are basically getting rid of A, we're getting rid of G and we are just summing two elements of B and then computing H on, the, on that sum. Um, we, another definition, like, uh, it's uh, 
what we call projective arithmetic. So project, abstract arithmetic A is projective with respect to arithmetic B. If uh, uh, projector and coprojector come from the same function, that is called the generator of, uh, of projector and coprojector. In particular, projector is going to be the inverse function, and coprojector is going to be the is going to correspond to the generator. And of course, it has to be bijective. So if you have any questions, I can answer. Um, otherwise, I'll uh, I'll just continue. Right. So <clears throat> the, the first class that um, that I present, uh, I call it A M. Right, like this, and we have that for any uh, real greater or equal than one, we define the corresponding non-diophantine prismatics as this, and I'll call the two operations uh, O plus and O times. Um, so the order relation is the restriction to. AM to the carrier AM of the usual order on the reals. And we are gonna give now some, some um, properties of AM and eventually we're gonna describe what it looks like. So AM is a subset of the positive reals that has a maximal element and a minimal element uh, with respect to, to, the, to the partial order, to the, sorry, to the order relation here. The maximal element is gonna be M, the minimal is gonna be zero. And we require that zero belongs to AM uh, to ensure having a multiplicative absorbing and additive neutral element. One, we require also that one belongs to AM, and this ensures having a multiplicative neutral element in our set, as we shall see now in a second. And also, we require that there is at least an element belonging to the interval 0, 1, such that it belongs to AM as well. And finally, we require that AM is closed uh, under the, these two operations, the one we told, I told you about before, or plus and or times. And they are basically uh, uh, they are basically the usual sum and product, but they are bounded. They have an upper bound given by this m that we that we choose that we select. So the the first thing we 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 really we are really interested about is that the the addition is associative, and this allows us to write um, finite finite. Uh, um, finite series as such, right? So a finite series from, of, of elements of, uh, of, um, of AM for N going from one to K is going to be equal to the minimum of the bounding element and the usual series. And uh, by imposing on M the relative topology derived from R, then we can, we can also define uh, infinite sequences, uh, sorry, infinite series, and they're going to be defined exactly as you would expect. So again, as the limit, and uh, they, they would be defined as the, being the minimum between the bounding element and the actual and the result of the, of the usual uh, series. Now, this is the, the, main, the main portion of, of, the, of my presentation. So why do we need to introduce this kind of, uh, of uh, class of non-diophantine arithmetics? So because they overcome the paradox of the heap, which I'm going to talk about in a second, and also because they can be used to describe natural and tech phenomena for which usual uh, the Ophantine arithmetics may fail. So the paradox of the heap is a paradox that arises from vague predicates, and in particular, uh, the vagueness of uh, the, the word heap. And the formulation of such paradox given by uh, Professor Bergin and Gunther Meissner in their 2017 paper is the following. They say that one million of grains of sand make a heap. If one gray of sand is added to this heap, the heap stays the same. However, when we add one to any natural number, we always get a new number. This is kind of the fifth piano axiom, right? So, the, and, and this induces um, an inconsistency, right? Because we are saying that uh, a number is equal to itself, even if we add one to it. And uh, this can be easily overcome by working with the class I just presented. We just need to focus on, on the element for which m is equal to 1 million. And in that case, we have that, uh, since we, we will have that m o plus 1 gets us m again. And so the paradox of the heap is solved without introducing inconsistencies. Um, th this class can also be described used to describe natural phenomena. For example, the raindrop uh, the raindrop example I, I was talking about before, and also uh, a, a, hum, a humoristic one given by Lebeg and reported by Maurice Klein in his paper that says, putting a lion and a rabbit in a cage, we will not find two animals uh, in the cage later on. 
So in both of these cases, it's enough to consider element A1 of the class, so for which n is equal to 1, and we will have 1 or plus 1 is equal to 1. And so we don't need to introduce inconsistency. Um, finally, uh, we can also describe tech phenomena that, uh, that um, our, our class allows to, to describe in, in, a, in a very interesting manner. So for, for example, Professor Rosinger in 2008 uh, pointed out that electronic digital computers when operating on the integers act according to the usual piano axioms for, for the naturals, plus an extra ad hoc axiom called the machine infinity axiom um, that says that there exists uh, a natural number that I call here m breve, far greater than one for what m breve for, for which m breve plus one is equal to m breve. For example, uh, m breve equal to to the power 31 minus one is the maximum positive value for a 32 bit signed binary integer in computing. So as you can imagine, piano axioms and the machine infinity axioms together give rise to inconsistency, which can be easily avoided by working with uh, the a m breveth element of our of our uh, class here. So I hope this is this is clear. Like the, the motivation for why we introduced this class of, of non diophantine arithmetics is clear. Um, this class has also very interesting properties. So. The first one is that uh, since AM is closed under uh, products or times and arbitrary summations of plus, then AM is the closed interval 0M. And this result implies that, uh, that the, the four-tuple uh, uh, the four tuple bold, bold face AM is, com is a complete totally ordered semi-ring. If you're not familiar with this mathematical uh, terminology, uh, a semi-ring is um, a mathematical structure where you have a set and two binary operation. Uh, usually uh, addition and multiplication, and uh, this is a ring, and uh, it, it is a semi-ring when uh, when the the every element in the set does not necessarily have an additive inverse, and we will see this in a second, and it's um, it's totally ordered uh, because it's an it, it is endowed by it is endowed with a total order that is a partial order such that every element can be compared to each other. Um, AM cannot be a ring again because for every element that is not zero, uh, it lacks the additive inverse, right? So because we are considering just zero M as, as we said here. Um, and another interesting stuff is that uh, in this abstract arithmetic, M is an idempotent element. That is, if we compute M or plus M or plus M anytime we want, we, we still get M. The other two very interesting properties we're going to present in the next two slides. So the first one is that AM is weakly projective with respect to the um, Diophantine arithmetic of the positive reals. And to see this, we just need to, um, to, to find two functions. In particular, the projector is going to be the identity function restricted on AM. And the co-projector is going to be uh, a simple function that is the minimum between the argument of the function and the M we are working with. And if we compute H of GA plus GB, we end up having A O plus B and the same thing holds for the product. So by this, we can, we can see that um, addition and multiplication in R plus are weakly projected onto addition and multiplication in AM. And also AM is weakly projected with respect to the, to the Diophantine arithmetics of the positive reals. Um, Right, and this is one of the, the most interesting stuff we, we found about this, this uh, class. That is that any series of element of R plus is, when it's projected onto AM, is convergent. This because the, the series of element of R plus can either diverge to plus infinity or converge. They cannot diverge to minus infinity because we are summing positive elements. And they, cannot be, and they cannot be indeterminate because the elements of the series cannot alternate their sign. And it is immediate to see that this proposition hold because once we project onto AM, even if the series diverges, it, uh, the, the, the operation O plus will have a, a bounding element, bounding maximum, maximal element that is capital M. So it's gonna be convergent. And this is interesting because uh, if in your analysis, you are desperate to achieve um, convergence, 
uh, you can project your uh, series onto uh, this, this the, the, an element of the class and then continue your analysis uh, in, in this, in this uh, arithmetic. The second class we present is very similar to the first one, but basically we are uh, bounding below, not at zero, but at minus m, as we shall see. And um, so every element for m greater or equal to one is gonna, be, is gonna look like this. And uh, I'm gonna call this operation box plus and this bo operation box times. Um, so the, the partial, the, the, the order relation is the restriction on a minus m, m of the usual order on the reals. And we require uh, a minus m, m to have a maximal and a minimal element, m and minus m respectively with respect to the partial order. And uh, we require zero and one to belong to the set for the same reason as before. And we also require two more things. So the first one is that zero belongs to the interval given by minus m and m. And of course, that there is at least an element in, in 0, 1, such that uh, the element belongs to a minus m as well. And also, we, <clears throat> we require that uh, if an element belongs to the set a minus m, m, then also its additive inverse does. Um, we require that, uh, that uh, the set is closed under the following operations that are basically the same as before, but instead of bounding them from below at 0, we, bounding, we bound them at below, uh, from below at uh, minus m. Right? So, they very fancy notation, but the, the concept is, is pretty, pretty straightforward. And uh, right, so what are the properties of this A minus M then? So since it, it's closed under products and uh, summations, box times and box plus, we have that uh, A minus M M is the closed interval minus M M. Uh, addition box times is commutative, but it's not associative. So A minus M M is not a semi-ring. Uh, this may seem a, a very harsh shortcoming, but it's really not. And it's, the elements of this, of this class can still be useful. For example, every element solves the paradox of the heap. And um, every element is weakly projected with respect to R. Again, I, I didn't dwell into details with this, but it's very easy to see that we again, once again, we, we select G as the identity and H as a function that uh, bounds at M and minus M instead of bounding just at M. Um, and also we see two more interesting things that the weak projection of any series of elements of R this time, not R plus, is absolutely convergent in A minus M M. And this is irrespective of, of, the, of the behavior of, of, this, of, the element, of, of the elements of the series. And also that the weak projection of any series of elements of R that is either convergent or divergent, that is, that is not uh, um, indeterminate, converges in, converges in A minus M M. Uh, the, we, all, we only have to be careful on the way we project because since box time, sorry, box plus is not associative, we need to project the entire series in the exact order we want the elements to be summed. Otherwise, the, the result might be different. And again, this may, may seem um, a shortcoming, but again, depends on the application the, the scholar has in mind. And finally, the last class I want to present, it's called BM. And uh, we present it, we, we define it as follows. So every element is of this, um, of this form right here. I will call this element, this um, operation uh, dot plus and this operation dot times. So the order relation again on BM is the restriction on BM of the, of the usual order on the reals. And this time we explicitly require that BM is the closed interval zero M. Uh, we also require that, um, uh, box times and box plus are defined uh, are defined specifically so that BM is um, uh, projective with respect to the Diophantin arithmetics of the extended reals. And to do this, we define function F that is going to be our generator uh, from the extended reals to BM uh, to be defined as such. So <clears throat> FX is going to be equal to M arc tangent of X over pi plus one half if X is in the reals is it, it's going to be m if x is infinity and zero if x is minus infinity. And f minus one is just the, the inverse function, right? So this function is, uh, is uh, bijective. Um, then the, the two operations, uh, box, uh, sorry, uh, dot plus and dot times are defined exactly so that, um, so that uh, boldface bm is uh, projected with respect to the Diophantine arithmetics on the, 
the extended reals, and it, that is f of f minus one a plus f minus one b, and likewise for the for the product. Okay, um, <clears throat> as I as I was saying, the by construction Vm is projective, and its generator f induces an homeomorphism between the extended reals and zero m. So if you don't know, if if you're not familiar with with um, what homeomorphism is. Uh, is basically an isomorphism between topological spaces. Um, this tells Im immediately that uh, the four tuple is a completely totally ordered semi ring as before, as for AM. And addition uh, dot plus and multiplication dot times are associative. And also plus infinity and minus infinity correspond to M and zero respectively. And this last particular is especially important because the projector, the pro the, sorry, the projection of any series of elements of R. So of elements of any element except for plus infinity minus infinity is going to converge in Vm as long as the series is not indeterminate. That is, if it doesn't oscillate. For example, we, we couldn't uh, project uh, minus one to the n. Okay. Um, and also the elements of Vm can be used to solve the paradox of the heap because of course m uh, dot, dot plus a is equal to m for all a in Vm. And also M is an idempotent element uh, of BM, as was M for the for both AM and A minus M. And um, so to sum up, I have this, this uh, table where every uh, property of, of, um, of the classes I presented are summed up. And of course, they all can be used to describe those natural and tech phenomena for which the often arithmetics fail. Uh, and uh, I'm very happy to, to take any questions about this. And thank you very much for your attention. Sorry. Okay, thank you, Michelle, for the interesting presentation. I understand that here it was many formulas, but sometimes we need good model of reality using mathematics, using yeah, mathematical yeah. formulas. And the example of physics teaches us this. As Galileo said that uh, the book of nature is written in the language of mathematics. So I understand that maybe here it was a little bit too much formulas, but it's necessary to better represent phenomena that we study. And in particular, we need more mathematics in the field of information studies. 